Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're ready to solve a real type of problem. Here we have, as you could probably tell, an equation that says if we add up all the voltages around the circuit, that equals the voltage source. And so here you can see that this would be the voltage drop across the resistor, the voltage across the capacitor, and the voltage across an inductor, which would be equal to the voltage source, which has a magnitude or an amplitude of maximum amplitude of 50, and a phase of 75 degrees. Also realizing that the angular frequency is known to be equal to 2. So how do we go ahead and solve for the current as a function of time in the circuit? So you can see this is a very realistic representation of what you might want to do with this kind of thing. And what we want to do here is we want to convert the equation from the time domain to the phase of domain or to the frequency domain. So what that then looks like is that 4i then becomes 4 times the magnitude of i in the phase of domain, plus here since we're integrating that would be a times i divided by omega times j, because that's how we convert an integral. And then here, since this is a derivative, this would be minus 3 times i, div oh, not, not divided, but times, uh, that would be uh, j times omega. And that would be equal to the right side of the equation. Now we can also convert that from the time domain to the phasor domain. We're given the magnitude and we're given the phase angle, so this becomes 50 times a phase angle of 75 degrees. All right, next, since we know the value for omega, since omega is equal to 2, according to our equation here, we can then replace omega by 2, so this becomes 4i plus a divided by 2, which is 4i divided by j, and here that becomes minus 3 times 2, which would be 6i times j. I don't need a little hat on it, times j. And that equals, ooh, let's see here, j omega. No, I, I replaced omega by 2, so we get 50 times, not times, but 50 for magnitude and 75 degrees for the phase angle. The next thing we want to do is get rid of the j in the denominator here. And so we can say that since... 1 over j is equal to minus j. If we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by j, we get minus j. So we can then say that this is equal to 4i minus j times 4i minus j times 6i is equal to 50 and phase angle of 75 degrees. All right, what do we do next? Well, it looks like we can combine these two. These are the two imaginary parts, that's the real part, and we can factor out an i. So i times the real part of 4 minus the imaginary part of j times 10, that's equal to 50 divided by, or not divided by, I'm already thinking ahead, uh, magnitude of 50 and phase angle of 75 degrees. Next, what we want to do is take this and convert it to magnitude and phase. And so you can see that the magnitude of this would be, well, let's see here, the magnitude, that would be, um, uh, let's see here, the magnitude, let's just go here, that's equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 10 squared, we don't care about the negative sign since we're squaring, so it would be equal to the square root of 116, which is equal to, with a calculator, 116, take the square root, would be 10.77, 10.77. And the phase angle, phi, would be equal to the inverse tangent of the imaginary part, which is minus 10, over the real part, which is 4. So 2.5, negative, take the inverse tangent, that gives an angle of minus 68.2 degrees. All right, so we plug that in here, so we have the current I times... 10.77 for the magnitude and a phase angle of minus 68.2 degrees. And that is equal to magnitude of 50 and a phase angle of 75 degrees. So now to solve for i, we're going to divide both sides by this quantity right here. So i is equal to 50 with a phase angle of 75 degrees divided by 10.77 with a phase angle of minus 68.2 degrees, which is going to be equal to, now we take 50 
divided by 10.77, which gives us 4.64, and a phase angle of 75 minus a minus 68. So it'll be 75 plus 68, oops, 68.2. That gives us 143, 143.2 degrees. And finally, if we now want to convert that back into the to the time domain, because this is in the frequency or phasor domain, we can now say that I, as a function of time, is equal to, the general format is going to be the magnitude, which is known to be 4.64 amps, 4.64 amps, times the cosine of omega t, now omega is 2, so that's 2 times t, and the phase angle would be a plus 143.2 degrees. And this then will be the current inside the circuit. So notice this is a pretty slick method. You're given an equation, presumably using Kirchhoff's rules by going around the voltages around the circuit. You have a resistor, you have a capacitor, you have an inductor, and you have a voltage source that's time varying as is expressed there. You convert everything into the phasor domain or frequency domain then you solve for i in the phasor domain, and then you reconvert back to the time domain, and there's your equation for the current in that circuit. It's a pretty slick method, and that's how it's done.